this is a gross picture for fibrocystic change we see here multiple cystic structures filled with uh, blood uh, proteinaceous uh, materials these are the cysts and here we have the whitish gray citroma uh, that's it's called fibrocystic change Microscopically, fibrocystic change, it can be of a non-proliferative type or proliferative type fibrocystic change. Here we have a proliferative fibrocystic change. Uh, here we have multiple uh, dilated uh, cystic structures lined by uh, epithelial cells which shows uh, proliferation and uh, presence of myoepithelial cells and here we have the uh, citromal fibrosis this is proliferative type fibrocystic change this is uh, apocrine metaplasia in which uh, it's uh, in presence of uh, apocrine cells is associated with uh, benignity and it is an indicator of benignity these apocrine cells line a uh, dilated uh, cystically dilated duct and these cells are uh, large cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm and uh, uh, prominent hyperchromatic nucleus these are apocrine cells here we have sclerosing adenosis. It is a type of uh, fibrocystic change. Uh, first, we see that the uh, lobular ar architecture is preserved. We see that there is uh, uh, breast lobules, and uh, there is a proliferation of uh, multiple uh, small uh, ductules or uh, duct-like structures. And uh, these uh, ducts uh, lined by a single layer of epithelial cells and a layer of myoepithelial cells, which is important for diagnosis of uh, uh, b uh, b benignity of the tumor. And here we have the stromal fibrosis. So we have proliferation of a small duct-like structures and uh, the uh, fibrous stroma. This is the most common benign tumor of the breast and as we mentioned it is estrogen dependent. Here we have uh, typical uh, gross appearance of uh, fibroadenoma. We have well circumscribed and it is easily resectable and easily removed from the surrounding uh, tissue. Um, um, the uh, color is uh, uh, gray to tan color and it has a characteristic uh, appearance and semi uh, septate appearance presence of uh, uh, fibrous septa in the gross appearance microscopically fibroadenoma consisting of two components epithelial component and the stromal component epithelial component here uh, ducts um, that is uh, lined by epithelial and myoepithelial cells also there should be presence of myoepithelial cells and this is the stroma which is myxoid type stroma uh, here this is a phylloidous tumor uh, it originated from the uh, citroma of the breast and not from the uh, epithelial part it shows two components the ep epithelial glands which are the least dominant component and the stromal uh, mesenchymal type or spindle uh, cell uh, uh, component uh, here uh, we have a leaf-like uh, appearance and uh, this is high power showing the glands here benign definitely والستروما تعتمد على uh, certain points uh, to say this is benign or malignant or uh, borderline phylloidous tumor depending on the cellular features, presence of atypia, uh, presence of uh, mitosis, presence of necrosis. In these uh, uh, points we can determine whether the tumor is benign, borderline or malignant phylloidous tumor. This is in situ ductal carcinoma uh, of comedocarcinoma type. We see here proliferation of the uh, multiple, uh, uh, high grade malignant mammary epithelial cells with the prominent features of malignancy, pleomorphic, hyperchromatic nuclei, and high NC ratio. With the center, in the center, there is a comedonecrosis. 
there is necrosis in the center of the lesion here we have the necrosis and here we have the surrounding malignant uh, cells of high grade uh, type and we have periductal fibrosis and chronic inflammation here we have periductal fibrosis and chronic inflammation the invasive ductal carcinoma grossly shows an a uh, white irregular my mass and uh, this um, uh, f hard consistency and on the cut section is uh, there is a gritting sensation because of uh, high uh, uh, fibrous tissue uh, reaction that accompany the invasion of the malignant tumor cells this is microscopically invasive ductal carcinoma this is called nos not otherwise specified we see here tubules or uh, small glands of uh, uh, malignant or cords of malignant uh, glands that is lined by uh, malignant epithelial uh, cells with, with no um, uh, myoepithelial cells uh, presence of uh, these uh, cords or ducts like our ductules uh, puts this tumor in low grade tumor and uh, here we have this is the uh, uh, fibrous stroma it invades the stroma this is the stroma of the tumor it invades the stroma so this is invasive ductal carcinoma this is invasive or infiltrative lobular carcinoma in lobular carcinoma the uh, cells uh, not form any glandular or uh, ductular structure they only uh, small cells uh, single uh, cells and uh, specific um, uh, diagnostic uh, feature is the indian file pattern the arrangement of the tumor uh, cells one behind the other um, in a single cord not glandular no no glandular structure for formation but sometimes we can see signet ring and we can see mucine production this is uh, goes with the infiltrative ductal carcinoma the stromal fibrosis is uh, uh, minimum and this is the uh, collagen uh, fibers and uh, the tumor cells tend to be a small uniform uh, round shape and the pleomorphism is only little this is Paget disease of the nipple and Paget disease uh, as we mentioned Paget disease is uh, uh, expression of underlying our skin lesion that represent an underlying uh, carcinoma of breast and definitely it will be of uh, in situ ductal carcinoma with or without invasion here we have the Paget cells which are large cells in the nipple and uh, contain large irregular hyperchromatic nuclei with a clear cytoplasm these are Paget cells. This is Paget disease of the nipple. Thank you.